What is up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today we're bringing the 2023 Volvo XC40. This is the all new refreshed Volvo XC40. And now they've added and changed a few things. So let's start off with the changes. No longer is the T4 and T5 engines available. They are now called the B4 and, and B5 engines. And they add a mild hybrid. And that mild hybrid doesn't move the vehicle. It just assists it, it helps it. It puts that stored energy it takes from the brakes puts in a 48 volt battery and then helps the car be smoother when you're driving it. So let's stop there for a second. If you're looking at an Audi Q3, a BMW X1, a Mercedes-Benz GLA, then you're obviously thinking about one of these things. And you're also probably thinking about something else that is not in the showroom that looks exactly the same with some small changes. And that is called a recharge. They make this in all electric with a 78 kilowatt hour battery. But we're not gonna focus on that. We're gonna focus on this thing. All Gasolina Volvo XC40. So let's get into it. In the 2023 Volvo XC40 B5, now under the hood, there is an inline four cylinder turbocharged, obviously. It makes 247 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, mated with an eight-speed transmission. Not expecting this thing to be fast. There are no drive modes, with the exception of an off-road mode, and that's in the screen only. So let's just put it to the ground and... So, what do I think about it? Well, at first impressions, I can tell you the steering is really good. It's not super stiff in terms of turning it, it's just a good amount that makes me feel like I'm engaged. And the reason I say that is because most other vehicles, when you change drive modes, again, this doesn't have it, but if it did, it changes the steering wheel sometimes so drastically that you're either too easy or too hard, and there's nothing like in between. But this is kind of like in between. Not too hard, not too easy. As far as suspension goes, it's not uncomfortable whatsoever, and it's a good all-rounder. Now, Audi always said, because this is very close to a Q3, and I will explain why right now, and it's because of the noise. This engine is noisy. And that's exactly what an Audi Q3 is. When they launched the Audi Q3, the new generation, it was loud, and people were like, eh, it's an Audi, it should be like a Q5, quieter. And this one is the same thing. It's loud from the engine, but the interior and the feel of it feels better than an Audi Q3. Not a lot better, but just marginally better. Except for this screen business. It's not better. The Audi is way better for the screen. But for the drive, actually? I don't know, man. This is better than the Audi in terms of the drive. It definitely handles better. It turns into corners better. It doesn't feel as top-heavy, even though you're sitting higher than the BMW and the Mercedes, but it feels like the steering is excellent. Like, check this out. Yeah, doing this left to righty thing. To the front. It has a short overhang, it's wide, it's low, it's aggressive. You have these Thor style headlights. And if you get the top of the line version, you have bending headlights. Not bending lights, bending headlights to turn when you turn your steering wheel. You have an all black grille that have these little tiny wedges out that makes the vehicle look broader, more 2023. You also do have a front camera, the Volvo. And moving below, you have headlight washers, fog lights, and then of course your front beeping sensors to add to your camera. And let's move to the engine. Now, as I open up the hood and I put my hand in the middle and pull up, I realize that this is very flexible and this is not, which means that the opener is here somewhere. So I should put my hand, lift it up, and voila, there are shocks to get this thing up. And there is your engine. And there are two engines available. The first one is obviously the B4, and the B4 makes 
194 horsepower and 221 pound-feet of torque out of a 2-liter turbocharged inline-4. They're both mated to an 8-speed transmission, no matter which one you buy, the B4 or the B5. Now, most people opt for the B5 that makes 247 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque because, of course, people like lots of power when they buy something small. And this is small. To the side. Well, on the side, you can see these Thor-like headlights from this profile. You can also see that this does have plastic cladding. They're more of a rugged look all the way lower and then all the way up the side and then all the way up this rear wheel well. It also has piano black on the mirror caps with signal repeaters and a 360 camera system all the way around the vehicle. It does have roof rails, which is a nice touch. A lot of vehicles don't have roof rails, especially in piano black. But the piano black is kind of weird because it's only on the bottom of this trim and not on the top. Kind of unique. When the keys are in your pocket, you walk up to the car and you can actually lock and unlock the car on front and back. Most cars are only in the front, like Kias. And most cars at this price point, even in Germans, don't have it in the back. So I like that. And come take a look at this thing. Overall, this looks really good, but the only thing I will sort of say eh, a bit weird is this little kink here. It's kind of like CRV-ish a little bit. Now they've tried to do some sort of body paneling by having a shoulder line right here, and they have this trim piece that really hides the two weld pieces between the top and the bottom right here. But the part that puts it all together are these taillights. Because when you stand here and you look at the side rear of the car, these taillights are totally visible from your angle. In most vehicles, they're not. And that really pulls your eye away from this kind of spiel over here. And that is good. <clears throat> huh? What's this? This is the bill of sale for the cheapest Corvette you can buy at $78,000. And if you want to watch that video, make sure you guys subscribe because we need all the subs we can get. Now back to the Volvo. So not too much has changed in this refresh 2023 in the back end because the design language has worked for Volvo and the XC40. So if we start at the top, you do have the shark fin and then you have an extended rear spoiler that is color matched with the wiper that's in the wrong spot. It should be hiding where the third rear brake light is. You have the Volvo badging across, you have the XC40, you have the B5 all-wheel drive to let people know that you're driving a 2023 and it's not a T5 no more. This thing does have power tailgate. It has exhaust, but they're hiding. And you have this piano black trim that slides from the side all the way to the other side. And then your Parktronic or your beeping sensors with your rear camera that's hiding underneath here. So come on up power tailgate and let's find out what's inside. Now Volvo has this upper parcel shelf and this parcel shelf is good because it hides your Christmas presents from being stolen. But what if you want your Christmas presents to stay in the same spot? Well Volvo's thought about that too. You lift this up and you slide it right here and now I have these little bag holders that go right there and they sit here and everything is great. But now I want to get rid of this parcel shelf and where do I put it? So I remove it and then I can put it upside down and I slide it right in here. And voila, it is out of the way and I have it gone. But what happens with my shopping bags? So you can't let it work anymore. It doesn't work because this is in the way. So your choice is to leave the parcel shelf on top with your shopping bags on the bottom or put your shopping bags like this on top and voila. So they figured it out almost. Now in terms of width, you have 43 inches wide and 36 inches deep. The seats do fold down 60-40 and you have a pass-through. Now when you put this pass-through down, you will see that you have both of the steel frame components of this third headrest. So in order to get the full capability of your skis going through here, you've got to lift this all the way up, which in turn will kill your rear view visibility from your rear view mirror. Sort of weird, but something I see in the back that's actually pretty cool for something this small is you have speakers all the way in the back here for the people that are sitting in the trunk. So all for all you trunk sitters here that want to do one of these and sit here where the bags go, you've got speakers. Okay, let's go, I got it, okay. Back seat of the Volvo XC40. Now I will be honest with you and not the honest type when people say, hey, I'm gonna be honest with you and completely lie. This back door did not open about three different times and this thing keeps auto locking and the key's in it and I'm worried about that because like, hello, kids, Volvo, what's up with that? Let's try that again, take two, Ian.
back seat of the Volvo XC40. Now, let's see how it is to get in and out of it. Now, it feels pretty tight right here. This is a long, big rear door. So it's good because it looks like it's gonna be easy to get in, but it's taken all this space here. So anyways, getting inside, decently okay for somebody that's five foot nine. Anybody that's six foot is probably gonna have to watch their head or do one of these chiropractor moves. Now, close the door back here, and it feels pretty spacious. This big panoramic sunroof is nice because it goes all the way to my head. Some of them kind of stop right here, which is kind of irritating. This one is nice and big, so it feels airy back here. You see it's firm, but they are comfortable. They're fairly upright, which makes you have good posture. But if you want to go on a long trip, you might want to lean back a little bit more, but you can't. This is the only seating position you have. The seats don't slide backwards and forwards in a vehicle this size. It does have two USB-Cs. It does have heated seats left and right. Of course, vents back here, which is nice. Not all of them have vents back here, believe it or not. It does have two cup holders, really nice quality sort of Alcantara in the middle and leather in the sides. The back of the seats, again, feel nice. It does have these little sort of meshy holders to put stuff inside. Overall, the quality is excellent. Like it's better than an Audi Q3. A unique piece about this door card is it does have a carpeted-like material on the inside, which is nice because I thought when I saw them, I say if you put something in the door, it won't rattle because it has this carpet-like material. And that's great, except for on the inside, it's plastic. So you have carpet on the outside and then plastic on the inside. So the rubbing will happen on the plastic. I guess it's more for looks, but if they took it one step further, they would have wrapped the inside also with carpet. That would have been like slam dunk Volvo. You're slamming, just not always dunking. Usually I take the garbage and I throw in the back, but not in this Volvo XC40. They actually give you a garbage bin in the center console. Take this thing, put it in here and goodbye. And then when you wanna get rid of the garbage, you simply just lift up the armrest and you slide the whole thing up and you throw it out. Genius. First time I've ever seen a garbage bin in a vehicle. They need to put this thing in like Escalades and Yukons. Speaking of Yukons, we're dropping a review soon. So make sure you guys watch it. First impressions of the cabin of the XC40 is clean. The trim pops at me like it's vibrant and it should have ambient lighting on each of these little tiny squares. They don't, but if they did, that would be cool. It's just minimal, lots of blacks and grays, including this piano black bezel around the nine inch Google based system. They also have piano black trim all in the bottom next to these cup holders, which will get scratched guaranteed. Anyways, let's start the door panel and move on. So you have two positions of memory seat. Speaking of seats, really, really good seats. They don't bolster out. They do have lumbar support and they do have this leg extensions that's manual. You have power folding mirrors by pulling this button down. And then moving along here, you have the standard Volvo steering wheel, which is impossible to understand, even if you read the owner's manual. And when you go test drive a Volvo, you press the buttons and the screen barely does anything. It's probably the most minimalist screen ever. They're like, we give you buttons and you really have to know how to press them in what sequence to make anything work on the screen. It's just very, very plain and simple. Now, if you've watched our channel before, you will know that in previous Volvos, we could never get the Apple CarPlay to work. But now in 2023, this thing does have Apple CarPlay. So sweet. It does also have wireless charging down here. It does have two USB-Cs, a cigarette lighter plug. It does have an ashtray, smokers two cup holders, the same nice small little knobby that goes back and forth because Porsche actually upgraded their little shifter to make it small, just like this fancy Volvo. Now moving down from the shifter, you have your park button. Then you have your electromechanical parking brake up for lock, down for unlock. And then you have this A with two little parentheses and that is for auto hold. I thought first when I saw it, it was auto stop and start, but it's not because it doesn't have a line across. It has two little parentheses and that means it's for brakes. And then how big is your center armrest underneath console? Hmm. Well, you can probably fit two bags of chips when you remove this little garbage compartment. And then what about your armrest? Well, it has decent amounts of padding, but it doesn't slide backwards and forwards. It does have nice white stitching, which is a really quality piece. Thumbs up. Volvo. Interior is money. So this is the nine inch Google based screen. This is what you get. You get Google Maps, 
Bluetooth media player, radio, satellite radio, and then of course phone, Apple CarPlay, which is new, Google Assistant, car status, air quality, the Play Store, and owner's manual. And that is about it. There's nothing more besides, of course, your heated seat and heated steering wheel by hitting this button. And it's the same kind of system that just is good, but honestly, it's fairly poor when you're an Apple user. If you're an Android-based user, this would work out really well for you because you've got pretty much all Google. So if you're gonna shop for one of these cars in this segment, the luxury segment of this small sort of compact SUV, depending what you're after, this is definitely in number two. Not number three, number two out of the four that we're talking about here. This, Benz, BMW, and the Audi. And if you want that luxury like status deal the volvo is probably not going to be in the top three it's probably number four but in terms of quality of car and overall build drive feel and looks actually i think this thing looks pretty good so if you're going to compare that it's probably number two but number one will always be status in, in that segment because nobody's going to buy this and be like i want an economical vehicle well they're buying something like you know japanese or a hyundai they're not buying a Volvo. They're not thinking, I want reliability, I'm buying a Volvo. No, they buy not a Volvo. And to be honest, when you're a YouTuber and reviewing cars, we actually have no idea about reliability. We get the cars, they're brand new, we get in them, drive them, they're nice, they've got tech that we like or don't like, visibility good or we don't think it's good. It's pretty straightforward on what us YouTubers basically decide. We don't dig deep into reliability numbers, and if we do, they're just numbers. So it's hard to actually be honest about reliability. We think of reliability in terms of how we've had them. So if we, you know, we take them, we rip them a couple times, if they give us a check engine light, we're like, this thing sucks. Or this door handle can't open half the time, this thing sucks. Most brands don't even make their own stuff anymore. It's all a third party company making the seats, making pieces. A few companies make their own stuff in house and then only push their own stuff. But generally speaking, there's a lot of parts here that are on other cars as well. So that's the story. For me, the software on this thing being all Google is a hard one. The Apple CarPlay is good now that they have it, so that's a thumbs up because otherwise, man, are you gonna buy this thing without being able to put an Apple product in it? Hard. So I hope you guys like this video on this Volvo XC40. We appreciate the sub, we appreciate the likes, we appreciate the comments. As always, we'll catch you on the next one.